So first I wanted to show you one of my favorite cities near Tokyo, which is Yokohama. And the places which inspired my uh, illustration series called in Yokohama. I really like to walk in port of Yokohama, although it doesn't look like the old photos I found on the internet. Now it's uh, only tourist ships and uh, shops and attractions, but yeah, it's still beautiful. So the next step is the Chinese district with a lot of people, but also a lot of interesting colorful shops. So let's go. to Motomachi district, the old city, we pass a bridge on the channel and now there is like a road above us but in 1960s there was nothing here and only ships passing here moving cargo from the port to the city. In the Motomachi shopping district there are those metal thingies, really industrial and nice so I wanted to put them in one of my illustrations. These are the stairs that inspired one of my illustrations. There were longer ones here, but they were destroyed in an earthquake a long time ago, so you can only see some photos in the internet. So this is the part of the city that inspired the last part of this illustration series. And it has a lot of European influences because of the settlers' houses here. So the streets, the houses, the church and the telephone booths even are kind of European-like. And it's a really, really well-known touristic spot around Yokohama. This is the church and the crossing from the end of the series and this is more or less what I do for illustrations or anime backgrounds. I go to places and I take a lot of photos to use a, as a reference materials but I don't paint exactly what I see on the photos, just mix and match the interesting elements to get what I want and that's it. Just let's go to the studio and I will show you how I did the series. First paper for this series I used the Holbein Waterford Artists watercolor paper 300 grams and it's cold pressed because uh, I didn't want so much texture on the pictures but It has a nice paper touch to it and it's glued on all four sides so it's really nice For the lines I used these Mitsubishi pencils and I really like them and really le recommend them uh, probably the best pencils I ever used and I used grades from F to 10B uh, to do the lines uh, to make a nice line variation uh, on the illustrations for the color part I used my custom uh, watercolor set it looks like this and most of them are Windsor and Newton paints and some of them are Schmincke and some are other makers. If you want to see the list, uh, it's on my website. And um, yes, I did it by myself just by experimenting and over time I just added some colors, removed some colors. I buy them like this. They come in, in cubes like this so you can buy and mix and match whatever maker and whatever color do you like. And uh, for coloring with watercolors, I used these brushes. These are also made by Holbein and they're called Mini Resable. 
I think they are kind of half synthetic brushes in this kind of shape and most of the time I use the 8, eight size one really nice brushes for the for the price sometimes I use like a little bit bigger brushes or different shape but most of the time I use the most simple ones um, and that's basically it from uh, from start to finish also you need uh, masking tape to glue the paper to the board uh, so masking fluid also made by Holbein and I used it for the snow effect in the last illustrations Some uh, acrylic gouache uh, This time made by Turner and I used this for the steam and smoke effect in the in the last illustrations And yeah some water in the nice container and that's basically it So the first part of the creative process I do is a digital sketch and I do it using my Cintiq tablet and Photoshop and I do it digitally because I like to move things around and check the perspective and check if the composition is working so I redo the first sketch a lot a lot of times before I uh, get something I like and then I move to uh, the final part of sketching so I do the picture as it will look like in the final version I'm using a really simple brush in Photoshop and while drawing the sketch I try to vary the line a little bit as it will look like uh, when I do it by hand and I also try to not to draw any really really small details that I won't be able to do uh, with a pencil so, for example, finished sketch, uh, digital sketch looks like this. I then print the digital sketch on usual A4 paper and using my light table, tracing table, uh, I do the lines of the illustration using a pencil and using the uh, watercolor paper I showed you before. I use quite hard pencils like HB or F grade for things that are um, in the distance and I use uh, softer and softer, blacker and blacker lines uh, the closer the things are. This way I get nice graduation of lines even if it's not so visible in the in the final illustration it gives a nice depth uh, to the line work and I really like the variability of lines that soft pencil gives me but the problem is that you have to be really really careful not to smudge the lines with your hand so I often use like tissue paper or napkins to to put my hand on but I generally try not to draw in such an order that I have to do that all the time when the line work is done uh, I take the copy from beneath it and then I scan it once uh, I have a A4 scanner so I have to scan it in two parts uh, and I do it in 600 dpi and the best quality I can get from, uh, from my scanner this will be really useful in the next steps and in the end uh, of the process watercolors are pretty difficult medium so I like to test the colors digitally before I start to paint manually so I take the lines that I did and scanned I take them in Photoshop and I do like a rough coloring of the illustrations in Photoshop using kind of water um, brushes in Photoshop and I try to uh, use bright colors that I can produce uh, using my watercolor set. Of course when painting like this sometimes you mix colors that are not um, really possible to do with the paints so you have to be really careful what you do with colors especially with greens and yellows. Sometimes a really nice color graduation that you can do on the computer is really really impossible to do using the paints so yeah it's good to have some knowledge of how uh, watercolors work before you start to do stuff on the computer 
When I have more or less satisfied myself with the look of the picture on the computer, I save the picture and send it to my laptop computer I have on, I have on my other desk. And then use the picture when I paint as a reference. I recommend having two desks for painting and computer stuff because yeah, you know, things get dirty and it's nice to have two places, one that's clean and one that you have paints all over the place. So now on to the watercolors. So the first step is to put the actual lines, the, the picture, on a board. I use masking tape for this and I do it in two steps. The first uh, masking tape layer is just to hold the picture to the board and the second is the border so it's where the picture will end where the color will end so you have to the first one you can do like just like that and it's done but the second layer you have to be really precise so the final picture doesn't get skewed in some way so it's nice to use a ruler or just take measure from the border of the paper to do it and it's good to test uh, the paper and uh, masking tape set if it won't destroy your paper when you tear it off so especially when you have a cheaper paper and a cheaper uh, masking tape uh, it happens sometimes that it destroys your paper completely when you tear it off so it's nice to test it before you, you put everything in place also, before you start painting with watercolors, sometimes you have to use the masking fluid. So places that will be white when the masking fluid is taken off uh, have to be covered with the masking fluid first. So yeah, I use a, um, a brush that I don't usually use anymore because the masking fluid, when it dries, it makes the brush kind of unusable, really. So you have to use like a cleaning fluid for this so I use a brush that I don't care about anymore and I just cover the whole picture with dots basically I just uh, make smaller dots in places when there's more space for the snow to cover and places that are really close I just make a lot of bigger dots this way I can give the snow a little bit of depth also which helps in, in the scenes like this one and finally we can go to the watercolors yes so basically I start with clouds and I pre-wet the paper in the places where the clouds will be so I don't get any hard edges in the beginning I put the basic colors for the clouds the basic graduation and then um, as the paper gets drier and drier I put the de details and sometimes I use uh, the hair dryer I have handy on my desk just hanging there uh, to dry the paper when I want it to dry faster and it's really important if you want to paint in watercolors to know how the paint and the paper behave uh, when they are wet or when they are dry and half wet it's really really important so it's really nice also if you use the same paper every time you know how this paper and this amount of water will behave this is one of the things you have to remember and be careful about when painting with watercolors and I just continue on painting remembering few things that I think are important uh, for this medium it, uh, for example paint first the light colors and then the dark one intensive ones and try not to mix too many colors because if you mix too many colors the uh, saturation of the resulting color drops re really quickly and I think it's better to do kind of brave strokes and brave color combinations and it works better with the medium than doing like this really really small gradual um, painting and I think the, the whole result is, is really better um, even if it's easier to uh, fail and this is one of the reasons why I do the color test digital sketch thing before I start painting with watercolors I usually leave the characters for the end of the painting process 
So even though I have more or less figured out the colors and I have a color scheme for the character I use in the series, but I can already see that okay this scene is kind of darker than I think it would be so I have used I have to use darker colors on the character and it's really important to try to make the character pop a little bit from the background so I tend to use a stronger brighter and, and more saturated colors for the character than the background especially most of the times he is in the foreground so yes I also try to plan ahead as much as I can and do not layer the colors if I don't have to. So for example here I have the shadows and the um, colors that are in the light and instead of, instead of painting everything the bright color and then adding shadows on top of that because I did the the rough color version version on the on the computer and I know where which color should come I can just paint um, the shadows and the highlights uh, separately which gives this a uh, nice little bit digital illustration kind of feel uh, which I like uh, maybe this is not a typical watercolor uh, technique but I like it Finally, it's time to take the masking fluid off. I use for this uh, eraser, we could say. It's an eraser for pilot friction pens. And it's just like a hard piece of plastic. It's not an eraser actually. But I like it how it feels and it's actually really nice for taking the masking fluid off. And finally, sometimes I add some special effects, like in the last illustration, I added some gold acrylic paints for details of the tatami mat and, and cans. And sometimes I also use white acrylics for some special effects, like the steam. But you have to be really careful with this, because it's really easy to smudge the watercolors that are underneath, that are not waterproof in any way. So I just do it occasionally. Finally, the last part of the process, the most pleasurable part is taking the masking tape off, especially being careful uh, around the edges and the tape that's near the edges of the paper, and it's done. The only thing that's left to do is to scan the picture. And I do it again with 600 dpi, so I can put the lines that I scanned before on top of the picture in Photoshop. And by doing so I can make the lines more darker and more visible, which makes the picture a little bit better. It's a little trick I learned. Then I make the version for the internet and I make also a version for the print shop I have. I hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something from this. You can see all the pictures from the series on my website or on my Behance account and you can also see the 8 videos I did for each of the pieces showing different aspects of the process on my YouTube channel. So please subscribe and visit my website. Cheers, Matt.